Hey, so today's video is going to be a little bit different from my normal thrift haul routine here. Uh, I decided to do a uh, Q&A question and answer video along with uh, like a get to know me uh, basically so I can fill you guys in on my history and my background and basically how I got started in the retail business. Uh, so let's begin my lifelong story. This is probably going to be kind of long guys so if you're listening or whatever you're doing go ahead do it. You can just listen to me ramble on about my life. So some history. Um, basically the whole like thrifting thing um, it's Kind of like it just runs in my family like my grandma she owned a consignment store so basically i don't know where she got her thrifting from probably her mom and then her mom's mom but so that was passed on to my mom so my mom's always been um my family's really like artsy uh, my grandma went to art school my mom is like an artist she likes to draw and create and sew and she just does all that kind of stuff so thrifting's always just kind of been there like I it wasn't just something that I wanted to pick up because I wanted to be cool uh, it was just something that we always did so basically what happened was when my parents got divorced uh, my mom became a single mom and it was you know it was kind of tough for my mom because she was only making maybe eight dollars an hour uh, it was me, my brother, and my sister, and my mom all living in a two-bedroom apartment, and my mom working off $8 an hour. So, um, I'm not going to get too personal, but let's just put it this way. Um, our My diet probably consists of ramen noodles, and we heated our apartment with the stove, like with the oven on. Like a couple years, that's what we had to do. So thrifting for me, that was just like my way because I love fashion and that was my way of being able to wear the clothes that I wanted and to be able to afford them to fit in. So when I was in high school, um, I would go shopping at Goodwill because my mom couldn't afford to take us shopping uh, back then. Um, the bins were only 25 cents a piece. So my mom would just give us each like $5 and we would be able to get like a lot of stuff with $5 pulling things that were only 25 cents a piece. Um, so yeah, so that's basically my background of thrifting. So I think that has a lot to do with why I'm able to find such good stuff. Um, I know I hear other people that shop in the bins and they even mention about um, just feeling the fabric and knowing the difference between brands. Like, I could probably thrift with my eyes closed. Like, I could probably dig in a bin with my eyes closed and be able to pull things out that I know are worth money and I can just feel the difference between brands. Um, so, that's with the whole thrifting background. Um, so, basically, uh, my friends always knew that I had a lot of clothes, like, all the time because I shopped at the bins and at Goodwill. So, I started selling clothes on Facebook. Um, I had so much clothes that I wanted to get rid of, but I didn't want to like redonate them. Um, I was like, you know, maybe I can sell them. So I started selling like trash bags filled with clothes for only $25 uh, because I knew I didn't, I probably paid $25 for the bag. So it wasn't like I was trying to make money off the clothes in the beginning. It was just, uh, okay, I don't want these clothes anymore. Uh, 25 bucks, like you can have them all. So I remember like driving, uh, meeting people, um, some people I knew, some people I didn't know, so I would bring somebody along and I would make $25 off a bag of clothes and that was cool. Uh, then I got into um, making shorts, <laughs> it's weird. Um, I would buy vintage like Levi shorts and I would cut them, well I would buy jeans. I would just go to Goodwill bins and I would fill up a cart with old mom jeans and then I would cut them and fray them and I would add studs and do all this cool stuff. And I made a Instagram account for them and I sold them. Uh, I created like my own store and I advertised it on Instagram. And I was, I basically made about $3,000 one summer doing that. Like that was cool, it was fun. And then some girl was like, uh, you should try selling those on Vinted. 
and I'm like, okay, what is that? Like, I didn't know. So I made a Vincent account and I posted my shorts on there and I posted them for like $25 because it, you know, uh, cost of labor and uh, supplies, all that type of stuff. So I didn't sell, I think I sold one pair for like $20 to be honest with you guys. Like they just, they weren't selling. So I started noticing, um, you know, I was going through Vinted and seeing what was on there and what was selling. And I thought, okay, let me just put my closet, what stuff that I was typically selling a whole entire bag for $25. I decided to just post individual items on Vinted and make some sales. So that's how I got started. I started selling on Vinted a lot. Uh, my first account on Vinted, um, I kind of just like got wrapped up in work and I just stopped selling on Vinted for a little bit. I took a break and was just focused. I was working in a call center uh, for Santander Bank and I was basically a phone banker. So I was selling online, um, online banking, checking accounts, whatever, answering people's inquiries. So, um, where was I? I got sidetracked so easy. Uh, so yeah, Vinted. Um, so my first account, uh, I just stopped going on there and then I forgot my password and I got locked out. So I didn't ship like three people's things, which is kind of shitty, but I could not get into my account. I didn't know it. I didn't remember the password, my username I even kind of forgot. And then I started a new account again to get rid of stuff. And then I started noticing like I'm making this much money and all this stuff that I'm selling was originally from Goodwill. So then I started actually sourcing at Goodwill and then reselling it. And I was noticing like my profit margins were pretty nice and I just kept going at it. So I kept selling, kept selling, picking up more stuff and I was selling things uh, for like $5, like not really like that much profit, but still a good profit, like five times. Basically I was like, making four times the amount of what I was buying it for, if that makes sense. Uh, so after I hit about a thousand sales on Vinted, I was like, you know, I need to take this to the next level. Uh, so then now I am selling more on Poshmark and eBay. eBay I just picked up, so I'm still new at eBay. So I'm still learning. So I can't really share much information about eBay. Uh, basically just do your research before you buy that item from Goodwill. Make sure you look. Um, if you're on eBay, uh, search the item and then in the filter just select sold items um, to see how much they've been selling for and then that's how much you know to price it at. Uh, Vincent I think is great for people who are just starting because it's a nice community and it kind of like teaches you a lot about what's selling and how to sell. Um, that's what I did. So now I'm focused on Poshmark more. I noticed that people are paying more on Poshmark, so I'm making more money on Poshmark. Um, so yeah, so that's basically my background story about how I got started. Um, so the question and answers, um, let me just pull up the questions that were asked. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the first question is which app is best for selling name brand items? Um, I would say Poshmark uh, because that's just where I've been having the most luck. Uh, Vinted is people on there are more cheap. Poshmark, I think it's because of the whole like seller's fee that people are willing to pay more. Um, do I source anywhere else besides Goodwill? No. <laughs> to be honest, no, I don't. Um, I I have in the past, but I just feel like I think it depends on where you live and what is around you. I'm in Pennsylvania, and we have a Salvation Army that's actually closer to me than Goodwill is, but I feel like the Salvation Army overprices their items. Um, what are your tips for Poshmark? Uh, my tips would probably be to share your item, your closet like continuously. <laughs> um, I share nonstop. Um, I also like to discount a lot. I know some people don't, but 
I overprice my items and then I discount by like $2 uh, maybe every other day. Depends on my mood. Like sometimes I might just discount it by $10. Like, I don't know. It depends on how bad I want to get rid of something. Um, do you buy from ThreadUp? No. I haven't bought from ThreadUp. I, I think it's mostly because I don't, I don't want to source online because I can't feel what the fabric looks like, what the condition is. Um, then I have to wait for it to get shipped to me and I'd rather just drive out to Goodwill and just get all my stuff that I want to sell. Uh, what equipment do you use to take your pictures? Um, I actually decided because of that question to use this in my background. Um, so my boyfriend just got this for me for Christmas and it is paper. You can hear it. And it is, I'll leave uh, links below to everything that I use. But I have like this hang thing, if you can see, like right here. And you basically just put like the roll, it's like a roll of paper. And there's all different prints that you can get. And I think this was like $14. So I put the roll on it. Uh, I know I see other people like taping it on their wall. But I'm in my living room. Like I live in a one bedroom apartment. So I use this corner of my living room for all my photos and everything. And yeah, the stands, um, everything's off Amazon. I also use studio lights. Um, they're from Lime Studio, which I'll leave a link below too. And I use a mannequin, and the mannequin is also from Amazon. Uh, you don't have to use like a mannequin if you don't want to. They have cheaper mannequins that you can hang on your wall. I know I started with that one, but I just felt like I don't really use my wall anymore. Now that I have this background, I feel like it makes my pictures look a lot better. Um, I do want to invest in a white, like a blank white one because some items don't look good with this background. Like you kind of have to play around with the colors of what you're selling to make your items stand out. Um, like cream colored stuff and this background is like a no-go. And I've noticed that a lot of my, a lot of my stuff that I'm selling right now that's like a cream color, it's not selling because I, I blame it on the background to be honest. So, um... If you're just starting and you don't have the money yet to like invest in photo equipment, I would suggest like finding a blank white wall that you have in your house and just getting one of those wooden hangers and hang your stuff on those. I think the wooden hangers look way cleaner and more professional than a black plastic hanger. Like you don't want it to look like you literally just like pulled it out of your closet and hung it on a wall. Uh, you want to make it look more professional and more like appealing uh just think about it if you're a customer and if you want to buy it or not you don't want to look at something that's like like this is my biggest pet peeve um when people lay their items on a sofa like i don't understand like why are you laying it on a sofa i would rather buy something laying on like clean carpet than on a sofa i don't know that's just me but i think play around with your photos and try um try and like get uh daylight Daylight's the best for photos. Me personally, I don't have time in the day to take my pictures anymore. So I take all my pictures at night and I use the studio lights. I mean, if I if I want to, I, pr I probably could switch things around, but that's just what I prefer. Uh, you could do flat lays. Um, these are good for flat lays. Like, um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I have like this little piece here taped onto my wall because I wanted... Um, shit. I wanted to try, oh god, I messed up, guys. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to try it on this wall, but like the way my outlets are set up, I couldn't get the lights to get onto this wall. So now I'm going to take this this piece off and just lay it on the floor and use that as a background to make it look like a hardwood floor. So play around with it. I would suggest before investing in lights, because they're a little more expensive, to invest in a nice background and use daylight to start. And then once you start selling more and you get your money, then use the money and reinvest it into your business. Um, that's what I did before I went full time. Um, I was using my money um, that I was making selling clothes and just using that to reinvest it into my business. And then the money I was making um, working, obviously was going to bills, but I kept it separate. That way I can keep getting this money to invest into my business to grow it so that eventually I can just snip 
snip those ties with the job because I don't want to do that anymore. I want to thrift all day and sell clothes. That's just what I want to do. Uh, so yeah, I hope this uh, video inspired anybody, uh, helped you out. Um, if you ever have any questions, like I'm literally an open book. I, I don't hide anything. Like I try and keep it as real as possible. Uh, so just leave a comment below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. So if you're new to selling or you're not new to selling and you know, you just want to keep in contact with someone else who's doing the same thing as you, then subscribe. Uh, I'll leave a link to my Instagram so you could follow that too. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.